Hi all. The oyster mushroom expert is with you. Today we will talk about primordia, these are the rudiments of oyster mushrooms. This is the most vulnerable stage of growing oyster mushrooms, especially if you have a two-zone system where you first grow blocks in the incubator and then transfer them to the growing chamber. Subscribe to my channel, here you will find a lot of interesting things about growing oyster mushrooms both industrially and in small quantities. I plan to add a video every Thursday, and in the summer once every 10 days. I will not only answer the questions you see, but I will also tell you what needs to be done to prevent such things from happening. At what stage should substrate bags be transferred to avoid empty perforations? Why do primordia turn yellow and rot? Why do primordia turn brown and dry out? Why is there no second flush? These are different questions. I tried to combine all the reasons that could cause problems. Look at this diagram. There are two factors for any problems with primordia. The first, external, is the climate conditions in the growing room. And the second factor is the humidity of the substrate. If the humidity of the substrate is only slightly lower or higher than normal, and the climate is suitable, everything will be fine and the primordia will grow. However, if the substrate is too wet or dry, plus the temperature and humidity are not suitable for the strain, the primordia will die. The most offensive thing for a mushroom grower is if the primordia die when everything is in order with the substrate. You have a white block that is evenly overgrown and there is white fluff in the perforations. This mycelium grows into the substrate and prepares to form fruiting bodies. But when you transfer the blocks into the growing chamber, this mycelium disappears and the slot turns black. Most often, such perforations remain empty, or primordia appear on the 8th or 10th day of the block stay in the growing room. Let's look at why this happens. Most often this happens due to a large temperature difference. In winter, it is 20-22 C in your incubator, and in the growing chamber, for example, 10-12 C, you bring a warm block from the incubator. Due to a sharp drop in temperature, dew falls at the boundary of cold and warm air. Small droplets of water accumulate on the film near the slits and fill the white fluff of the mycelium. Primordia cannot grow there because the film of water prevents them from breathing. What to do in this case? Of course, the ideal solution is to raise the temperature in the growing room to 14 to 15 degrees. For most strains, this is the optimal growing temperature. But what if this is not possible? For example, because the heating boiler cannot raise the temperature higher. Or if the optimal temperature for growing your strain is the same 10 or 12 degrees that you have in your room. I would like to remind you that we are now talking about a two-zone growing system. If you have one room in which the substrate both overgrows and bears fruit, you simply change the conditions. It is important to remember that the temperature should be reduced slowly in all cases. 1-2 degrees every 8 hours and you have to make sure that there is no cold air coming out of the ducts. It should differ from the temperature in the room by no more than 3 degrees. In the same way, it would be possible to reduce the temperature in the incubator with a two-zone system. But this is only possible if your incubator contains blocks of approximately the same age. Most often, mushroom growers have only one, less often two incubators. What to do? I propose an option with an intermediate room, in which the temperature will be lower than in the incubator, but higher than in the chamber. This can be a fairly small space, like a corridor. After all, if you have a small production, then every day you take out not very many blocks from the incubator. Maybe 50 or 70. Even a hundred blocks won't take up much space. They need to be placed indoors on racks, perhaps close to each other and leave it in this corridor for a day. During this time, the substrate will cool down a little and can be transferred to the growing chamber. What temperature should be in this corridor? You calculate it this way, take the difference between the temperature of the incubator and the growing room and divide by two. 
For example, in the incubator it is 21, in the growing room it is 12. The difference is 9. That is, in the corridor the temperature should be 16 to 17 degrees. If your grow room temperature is 9, the difference is 12 degrees. That is, the temperature in the corridor should be 15 degrees. Next question, primordia formed and then began to die off. Why is this happening? We'll look at it in the next video.